Welcome back. So I want this time to actually start working on this delete button right here. Let's see if we can make that work actually. So what we're going to do is we're going to figure out first how do we actually figure out the uniqueness of each of these uh, users we have. And let's go to Firebase to figure that one out. Each user on the users has a unique ID as the top level um, document right here, or sorry, top level uh, attribute right here. That's actually the ID. And that's the way Firebase figures out who is actually the, the users below. Cool, so let's go to our code to actually try and figure out what is actually the ID for each of these guys. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab this down here, and then I'm going to subscribe to that one, and I'm going to kind of try to um, send the users just into the console. So just to make it very simple here, I'm just going to do a console log and just print out the users so we can actually see them here and what they contain. And let's just do a string so we know that it's our users we're printing out, and then a comma and then users. So now I'm going to print out the actual users right here inside our application. And down here they'll pop up as soon as they're loaded. And you'll notice here that an object in here actually has the key reference down here. So this is actually the ID and then the first property after that. So that's the ID we need. We need this key inside our tool. And luckily, since we're using Angular and that uses JSON in its objects, it's very simple. We're just going to go to our user TS file and here we're going to add the key as a string. Don't remove the dollar sign that's actually part of the name of the key. Good, so now we have the key available inside our code, meaning that now we can actually start building the real delete button. So what we're going to do inside the button that should delete is we're going to make a click event. And that click event for now is just going to do a delete like this. And that delete is going to redirect itself to the smart component. So now that we have the delete, we're going to add the delete function in here like this. And right now we're just going to have the delete ready and we have the user available so we can pass him either in through the component here or we can pass him in directly since he's already available down here. So that's really up to us. I'm going to pass him here just to show you that is actually possible. But we need an output. We need to let somebody on the outside actually listen for this click event when we're actually getting this uh, delete event triggered. So we're going to add an emit event here called delete user event. Let's just make it very easy to read equals new event emitter because we want to send an emit uh, emit an event to somebody from the outside like this and we of course need to finish this up and that's whoa that was wrong event emitter is not from node.js it's actually from the core of angular so where's that there we go so now we have the event emitter ready and we can actually also tell the event emitter that what you're getting back is actually a let's just send back the entire user here for the fun of it we don't need that, we only need the key. No, let's send back the key. So a string is actually going to be returned from the event emitter. So what we're going to do is we're going to say, when we press the delete, we're going to say this, delete user event emits, and then we're going to pass back the actual key for the user. So user dot dollar sign key. There we go. And of course, we need to put this in front of it, like I always forget. So now we've explained to whoever wants to use the user component that we can actually delete something, right? So we just we just need to trigger that delete further down the list. We'll do that in the next couple of lessons, but now the DOM component is ready to actually use the delete inside any smart component that we want to use it in. Okay, see you in the next lesson where we'll try and do this.